Hello, people who want to code. My name is Adam, and welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial, lesson number three. Let's get started right away. Lesson number two, we finished off with a LED on a breadboard we were able to control using our Arduino code. I'm just gonna do a quick reminder of the wiring as we won't be changing it in this lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be working on the serial monitor, how to get input from the user, and how to print output to the screen. Let's quickly review the wiring diagram. We had pin number eight wired to one channel on the breadboard. That channel was connected to a 220 ohm resistor, which crossed the bridge of our breadboard into the long leg of the LED, through the LED, and back out to the ground channel. This was our wiring diagram, so if you had it apart from before, you can put it back together now. If you still had it together from the last lesson, great, you're ready to go. Now we're gonna jump over into the code. So here we are in our code from the end of lesson number two. Now I'm gonna just start with the base lesson two code here, not looking at the extension, the challenge that you may have completed after the lesson. I hope you did. What we're gonna do to start our file for lesson three is a little different than just creating new sketch. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our old code and then just rename the file. So let me show you how we do that. Over here under our sketchbook, and if this panel isn't showing up for you, you can click on sketchbook over here on the left-hand side. You can see a little down arrow next to the lesson two. If I click on that, I can choose duplicate sketch. When I do this, it's gonna create a lesson two copy. It has all the same code in it. It has all the same code in it as lesson number two, except it's called lesson two copy. Way up at the top here, I can click there and it will allow me to rename the file to lesson zero three. Hit okay. All right, we're making some progress. So I'm gonna change a few things just quickly. We're gonna change that to lesson number three and we're gonna change the descriptive text to using, using the serial monitor. We don't need to change any of the other code right now because it's all set up for our LED, which is totally fine because we'll still use our LED in this lesson. I'm gonna add a little bit of code in our file above our setup function. And then we're gonna take a few minutes and discuss it. Take a minute, pause the video and copy down this code. Try to be as precise as you can. Now I'm gonna go through it so if you miss something, you should be able to catch it. I'm gonna make my code just full screen just to remove some of the clutter. Let's have a look at the first line of code. It says INT space green pin with a capital P equals eight semicolon. What the goal of this line is, is going to be to create something that's called a variable. A variable is a very important thing in computer science and in coding. We need to be sure we understand what it is. So what is it? A variable, just like in math, is something that we can use to reference any number of values. Instead of always using the number eight, for example, if we use green pin with a capital P, we can have that refer to the number eight, or we could change that number to something else. The real benefit of this from a computer science point of view is that let's say I had to use this green pin or this number eight a whole bunch of times in my code. So I use the number eight and I type it in a whole bunch of different places because I have a lot going on in my code. And then all of a sudden I realize, oh no, I don't have room on my Arduino to fit this pin where I want it. I'm gonna have to move that wire from pin eight to pin number 10. Okay, that's easy. I just pick up the wire and move it to pin 10. Except now I have to go to my code, find all of the places where I reference the number eight for that pin and change each of them manually to a 10. What this allows me to do is by creating a variable called green pin and assigning it the value of the number eight. Now I can use that variable name, green pin, all throughout my code and it will mean or it will represent the number eight. And if for some reason I had to change that number, I only have to change it in one place. And if I change a the number there, it will change what that number points to, which is green pin in all of the rest of the code. So that's the reason variables are so useful from a programming perspective. Now, back to this program. What about int? Well, if you can remember from math way back when, there's a number set called the integers. The integers are numbers that do not have decimals, but can be both positive and negative value. So what we're saying is that let the variable name green pin represent an integer, so a number with no decimal. And what integer do we want it to represent? The number eight, and we end that statement with a semicolon. So where could we use this? Well, let's go down here in our setup function where we set up our output pin for our LED. We use the number eight. So instead of using eight, let's type in green pin. And 
These are all case sensitive. Variable names are case sensitive. We use here what's called camel case, which means we start a variable name with a lowercase letter and then any additional words are started with uppercase letters. This is because we can't use spaces. And unless you're coding in Python, usually we don't use underscores. So this is our way of kind of separating words when we're creating variable names. So this pin mode line actually runs exactly the same. We're still assigning pin number eight. We're just doing it using a variable. Okay, let's look at the next one. Integer known as blink time. And you'll notice I just went directly to a semicolon. I did not put an equal to, I didn't give it a number. I just said, you should know as a program that if I'm gonna use the word blink time, I'm referring to an integer. At some point in my code, I'm gonna give it a number value, but I don't have that number right now. So just know that it will be an integer. So when you see it, know what to look for. And the last one is a string with a capital S. And these are a little bit more complex. We'll talk in pieces about strings. We won't dive in too deep as it is a relatively complex data set. What a string can be seen as is a string of characters. So imagine that first little necklace that you made when you were in elementary school where you put the little letter beads on the necklace and at the end you had your friend's name. Well, imagine that each letter bead is a character, which it is, it's a letter or a symbol or a punctuation mark. And then when you put them together on that necklace, what you've created at the end is a string of characters. So for the most common sense approach, we would call this a word or a sentence or a paragraph. So when we string these characters together, we create what's called a string. I've called it welcome message with a capital M and I'm gonna assign it a value right away. Now, how do we define our string? Well, what we do is we use quotation marks. So we start the quotation mark and then we type all of the characters that are going to be part of the string. This includes spaces. This includes parentheses or brackets. This includes punctuation marks. When we're done with all of the characters that are going to be included in the string, we put a closing quotation mark and that represents the end of that string. Then we end our statement by closing the parentheses with a semicolon. So anywhere else in my file, if I see welcome message, it's gonna represent this entire string of characters that I've defined here. Just realize that bracket isn't supposed to be there. So we're gonna just remove that parentheses. Sorry for that mix up. Green pin is eight. Blink time is not actually given a number yet. And welcome message is this string here. Excellent. So now we're gonna go in and use our serial monitor and we're gonna explain what that is. So inside of our setup function, just underneath my pin mode, I'm gonna add in a little line of code. So the line of code I added was serial with a capital S dot begin parentheses 9600 close and semicolon, okay? What this is gonna do is it's gonna create a serial port which allows for back and forth communication between the software and the sensing Arduino and whoever's viewing it from the computer screen. So we use the BOWD 9600. I'll show you this when we actually display the monitor so you can see what it works. Before we do anything else, let's test it. Let's actually print something using the serial monitor so we can see that output. And what better thing to print than our welcome message? So we do serial.println parentheses, and then inside we wanna print the string Welcome message. Serial capital S dot print LN, which stands for print line, which means print and then jump to the new line. Welcome message, which should be all of this. What we'll need to be able to do to test this is we're gonna to need to push this code out to our Arduino and then I'll show you how to look at the serial monitor. So I'm gonna push this out to my Arduino. Okay, so my code is pushed. So now I need to go and look at the serial monitor. So over here on the left-hand side, if you have it full screened like me, you won't see this panel. If you don't, you'll be able to see it. There's something called the monitor or the serial monitor. If I go to that, it's gonna display me this serial monitor here. And you can see there is my welcome message. Hello, how long would you like the LED to be on for in seconds? Right, which is awesome. You'll notice it's set to the 9600 baud, and it also allows an input field where you can type and send it back to the Arduino or to the code. We haven't dealt with that yet, but it's important that we recognize that it's there. So next, let's consider what would happen if we just did that line twice. So serial.print line message, serial.print line, welcome message. And let's just see, I'm gonna guess it's gonna print twice. So we push our code out to our Arduino, it's done. The serial port becomes available and there it is twice. And you'll notice it jumped to the new line before it printed the next one. Awesome. What I'll do, I'm just gonna delete the welcome message from this and what this is gonna do is just gonna create a gap between this printout of the welcome message and whatever the next thing I decide to print is so that it's not so cluttered together on the monitor. Okay, so now it's time for us to get input from the user. So I'm gonna go down to my loop function now. I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times and I'm gonna add in some code here. 
What I added for code was an opportunity to ask for input. So I did serial with a capital S, dot print line, and I asked blink time seconds colon space. And then I ended that quote. So that's the actual string of characters that will print to the screen. Now that's not actually getting the input, that's just putting a prompt out there for the user to actually do the input. It kind of contradicts with my welcome message. So why don't we tweak our welcome message a little bit and we'll do that up here in the variable. So we're gonna change this to hello. This program will let you decide how long to keep your LED on for. So it acts as kind of a descriptor that's gonna run once because it's in the setup function. And then this loop is gonna run repeatedly. And this is where we're prompting for the actual blink time. So now that we've put the prompt out and we've asked for the input, we need to actually wait for and store the input. So I'm gonna add a couple more lines of code. Let's go through the lines of code that I've added. First, we're gonna wait for the user to input data into serial. Now we're gonna talk more about loops in a later lesson, but for right now, here's what I'll tell you. This is called a while loop. And the way it works is the code inside these squiggly brackets right here, which right now you'll see there's no code in there. The code inside those brackets is gonna run forever until the condition is met. And in this case, the condition says serial.available is equal equal to zero. What that means is that it's not going to let me out of this little nothing loop until the user has made the serial available again. And that's not gonna happen until they input data. So this is gonna put you in essentially an infinite loop doing nothing until the user clicks that send button in the serial. Once they click that button, this is no longer true, which kicks out the while loop and lets the rest of the code run. Next, we need to store their answer. So they've entered something and they've clicked send. So we need to get it and store it. Well, this is why we created that variable blink time at the beginning of the file. So we already have a variable name that we know represents a number, so let's use it. So I use blink time equals to assign it a numerical value. What number? The number I get from the user. And I do that using serial with a capital S dot parse int with a capital I. Parse int means parsing an integer from a string. So taking what they inputted, treating it as a number. And then I have this times 1000. Now the reason for that hopefully is somewhat clear because when I put the prompt out there, I asked them to enter the time in seconds. But you'll remember from the last lesson that when I actually put this out to my LED, I need to put it out in milliseconds, which is a thousand times a second. We multiply by a thousand and we can do that using that asterisk, which you can find above the eight key on a traditional Windows keyboard. Multiply by a thousand is gonna create that numerical math operation that we need. Awesome. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna ask the user for the time, it's gonna wait for them to enter it, and then it's gonna store their answer under blink time. So where do you think blink time should go? Well, we asked them how long we want the LED on for. So in our code from lesson two, we turned it on right here at the digital right, then we waited for one second. This time, let's wait for blink time seconds. And what that's gonna do is now the user is gonna get to pick how long that LED is on for and how long the LED is off for. Let's check it out. So we've uploaded our code, our welcome message is printed, it's left an extra space underneath it, blink time in seconds. If I enter four seconds, we should see our LED turn on for four seconds and then turn off for one second. The reason it only goes off for one is because we've left this delay in the off to one second, and that's totally fine. Let's just have a quick look at what it looks like. I'll just show you really quickly in my simulator that it works the way it's supposed to. Down here, I'm gonna enter in four seconds, and we'll see our LED turn on for four seconds, and then turn off for one second. Okay, then it asks me again, how long do I want it on for this time? I enter three seconds, and I can see my LED is gonna turn on for three seconds, and then turn off. And there you have it. That's what we needed to do for the basics of lesson number three. Now really quickly, before I go over the extension activity, I just wanna show you one little thing that you can do. This is called string concatenation, sometimes called appending strings together as well. All I'm gonna do for you right here is on this line in my setup where I printed my welcome message, I'm just gonna show you one quick thing. I'm gonna add a plus sign and quotes, and I'm gonna put my name. What this should do is it'll take the welcome message string, then after it finishes printing it, it will print these characters beside it. Now you can do this with a variable name, not in quotes, 
or you can do it with a literal string in quotes like this. So when I upload this, what we'll see, and it won't make a lot of sense, is the welcome message plus the name Adam. So let's have a quick look at that, make sure that works, and then I'll explain your extension. Here we go. Right here, it's a little faded because of the way my thing is set up here, but you can see how long your LED is on for Adam. So it appended that onto the string. Excellent. For your extension for lesson number three, what I want you to do is customize your welcome message to be something a little different. And I want you to ask the user for their first name. And I want you to include their first name in the welcome message. So when your program launches, it might ask, what is your first name? I enter Adam and it might say, hi, Adam. In this program, you'll be able to control how long your LED is on for. And you'll have to use string concatenation to do that. You should also practice using a variable to store the person's name. I won't be doing a challenge for lesson number three, so I guess I'll see you back here in lesson number four. And if you like the tutorial series, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date as we continue to post the Arduino Basics tutorial series. See you next time.